Yo, what's up, y'all? Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Right. I'm Keys from Mike and Keys. Uh, did Victory Lap with my partner Mike with Nipsey Hustle. You know that's that's what we known for out here. So that's the mic on. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm La Russell. Uh, black man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in good company. Uh, I just be lifing and doing what I love. That's right. Come on. What's up with Boogie? Hold up. I'm about to pop my shit. I'm about to go. Turn this motherfucker up, y'all. Hello. Hello. What's up, with you, Mike? What's up, I'm Mike? One half of Mike and Keys. Uh, happy to be here. Um, we trying to bring the spirit back to LA, so we just happy to be here. Come on, that's right. What's up, with you, Craig Smith? Big dog. What's going on, everybody? My name is Craig Smith, aka the Rhino. I was born in Inglewood, California, originally from Los Angeles, California. I am here to inspire the next generation to go after their dreams like I did, and that was to become an NBA player. But not only that, I'm an author, I'm an ambassador of my former team, the LA Clippers. I work for different nonprofits and consultants, and I uh, do uh, producer work as well. So it's just a, a ton of things I do. Come on. Where we where? What we do? Where we Wednesday? What's up, man? How you doing? Yeah. Hey, look, I'm uh, I'm West Side Web. I'm from Long Beach, California. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying um, <laughs> I'm an artist. I'm a producer, turn artist, a producer first. I rap now. I be bringing motivation, and elevation, to everybody. In. You know, I just be making hot shit. Y'all gotta go check it out. Man. Come on. Hey. <laughs> Now, starting with you since you got the mic, Westside Web, your theme is boss. You feel what I'm saying? Um, you came into the game as a producer, of course, and transitioned into a rapper. You talking about all the Baccarats, the fine wines, the vacation, boss talk. Uh, as we kind of talked about before, everybody want to be a boss until it's time to do what a boss do. So, uh, Webby Web, give us what that is to you, man. What is it to be a boss? Man, I ain't gonna lie, first it's a mindset for me, you know what I'm saying? You gotta wake up every day with that, cause it ain't built for everybody, you know what I mean? Everybody gotta learn how to play their role, and everybody not a boss, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, you gotta know that sometimes, but really being a boss, is everything fall on you, you know what I'm saying? You, you ain't got really no room to be blaming nobody, or, you know what I mean? Everything fall on you, 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 you gotta learn how to take all the L's, you gonna take all the W's, but being a boss is pushing every day. You know what I'm saying? Like pushing your team and the people around you, and making sure everybody doing what they doing. Say our machine could be in motion and keep going. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And sometimes you gotta make hard decisions as a boss, but it be necessary. Come on, straight like that. Yeah. What's up, Craig Smith? Again, we got two to three minutes. Y'all make sure y'all look at sneaks for the time. Craig Smith, what does it mean to be a boss to you, man? To to be able to lead, right? I think uh, my bro just said something great too. Hello. Yeah. He just said something great too, um, with the quote of "You're gonna make some, have to make some hard decisions, but you gotta be able to lead and lead a, lead a specific group, especially." And I know, I know for me personally, like nine to five just wasn't for me, and it wasn't part of my plan in life, right? Because for me, I've been blessed to play this game of basketball. But then for me, after that, it was like, "Well, what's going on after basketball?" Right? You're gonna have to get into some real life stuff, right? You might have to get a job or certain things like that. But in the way of nav navigating and to be able to manifest certain things, I was able to nav navigate my way through things just based on my experience. See, everybody don't have certain experiences, which is unfortunate, but at the same time, I think that's why I'm out here to preach certain things with the younger generation. Just to help them go after their dreams because you're gonna have to navigate and you're gonna have to have faith. 
I think uh, Dr. King some, had a quote like this. He said, faith is the first step you take before seeing the whole staircase. Come on. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to believe in yourself and your abilities to go out there and manifest something great. And then once you do that, then you're going to have a team out there that sees that in you, believes in you, and then that's how you know it's confirmation. Yeah. yeah. Come on, y'all. That's a big game right there. Let's go, Mike. What does it mean to be a boss, man? Uh, what it means to be a boss first, I think, is sacrifice. You have to sacrifice for, you know, your team, the people that you care about. And I think giving is first. And if you sac sacrifice for the team, everybody's going to follow you if you're a true leader. A true leader is going to worry about everybody else before itself. Mm. I think that's what a real boss does. Ooh, come on. That's a boy right there. What's up, Pookie? Come on now. What's happening? Um, first thing first. A boss is somebody who can still take instructions. Mm. Come on. Okay. Okay. Um, somebody who can still lead and still be led. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it's, it's all a foundation for being a boss. It's not just a word or an action. Yeah. It's, you know what I mean? It's an actual building foundation. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to accept your blessings and your lessons with the same gratification. Mm -hmm. A lot of people get happy when they're blessed and mad when something go wrong. I get happy when something go wrong because I'm about to make it over something come to get now, to come another on. blessing. Hey, come on, hey, you feel me? Come on, come on. So a boss is really, like I said, a foundation. You got to be able to still take instructions while giving it. Yeah. Come on, that's, that's the boss. Right. Yeah, come on. What's up with it? What are you doing, Russell? Yeah, I heard. Come on. Man, I, uh, being a boss is being accountable and responsible for your success and the failures of what's being built. You know, a lot of people only want the first half of it. And when you the boss, it don't really matter who fucked up the job or why it didn't go right. They coming to you to figure it out. So being a boss is just being accountable and responsible for everything that may happen while building. Yeah. That's right. Come on, clap it up for that. Man, I'm, I'm mad y'all took all my answers. Come over here, last time. Y'all just cooked me right now. <laughs> nah, but, uh, nah, but to me, being a boss is uh, an act of humility. And I like what you said, brother. Uh, like, you gotta know how to be led, too. And I feel like you gotta be a servant first before you are a leader. That's right. Cause how do you know what other people need if you didn't need it yourself? You know what I mean? So, so yeah, I, I like the fact that you said that. Cause I was really about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of that, back to Pookie. My question, man. Uh, if you know Pookie F. Rudy, you know. If yes. you know, you know. <laughs> now, hustle. This is his thing. Hustle. I mean, promo, cooking, music, dancing, hosting. Was even a manager for Ash Bash. You know what I'm saying? Even seeing DJing for Charles Clemens, what doesn't Pookie F. and Rude do? Talk about, talk about that hustle, bro. I mean, I'm gonna tell you, Pookie F. and Rude was in Vegas two hours ago. And he's here right now. And he does this shit on the regular. Talk about it, talk about it, bro. It's just being consistent. That's, um, I only live by two things, faith and work. So that's what makes the hustle. Like, he spoke on having a nine to five, I am my nine to five. Mm. And until you get that mindset, you're gonna continue to follow rules, continue to do everything the same day at the same schedule for no fucking reason. Yeah, come on. I'd rather struggle and build on myself and work for me. Go through the same struggle you go go through with a job. Don't y'all got a job and still have bills and struggle? Mm -hmm. I don't have a job and I don't struggle because I am my nine to five. Mm. You feel me? Yeah. So the hustle is being consistent. Walking by faith, and it's no, it's no type of action in the faith if you don't put in work. Mm -hmm. So, see how it goes hands in hand? Yeah. You gotta stay consistent with the faith and the work. Mm -hmm. Just a cycle, I'm like, just keep going. So that's why I got the hustle, I'm an entrepreneur. You hear me? <laughs> <laughs> I can put that on the flyer. <laughs> that's right now, the Russell, talk about the keys to that hustle, man, and, 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 and what is that to you? Man. It's showing up every day. It's going outside and watering that tree even when it's not bearing fruit. Come on. Woo. Even when you don't get to eat from it yet. Mm. Still pouring water on that seed, trusting that one day you're going to be able to eat forever. Mm. Mm. So come on. Come on. Come on now, King. King, you're getting fucked up over here. Damn, I hate to be here right now. 
I mean, I'm, I was gonna say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Yeah. Come on, he getting Mike Tyson. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm, I would just, you know, be myself, man. I, you know, but uh, the hustle, I feel like, you know, sacrifice. Um, <laughs> you gonna be stuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah. um, you know, me, me and Mike been through the hustle, so I can only explain what I've been through in my own experiences. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, like working with artists, you know, it takes sacrifice and staying at the studio and missing your mom's birthday. Ooh, man. And, yeah, that's tough. You know, I, and I just saw a clip with Steph Curry at the Olympics, and he couldn't make it to his daughter's birthday but he was like ha ha happy birthday uh what's his daughter's name yeah. 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 but happy birthday to her yeah so so that showed me like it takes that in order to get where you want to go so that's that's what i think about it about hustle for sure come on now what you will talk about that hustle oh man you know um i think hustling is man it's something, it's like a program, you know what I'm saying? I think every real hustler got a program where they, you know, they got a certain schedule. They do something every single day the way they do it. Like bro was saying, you know, you, you, you plant them seeds to grow them trees and you gonna have them days where you don't wanna do it, you know what I'm saying? Whether Whatever hustle you're doing, whether you going to work, whether you in the streets, whether you in the studio, you got the times you don't wanna go. You gonna wake up like, man, I don't even wanna do this today. Shit, I got all these bills, we ain't got no money. I don't, shit, it ain't working you gotta keep going, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, from my experience and stuff, like, that program is key for your hustle, you know what I'm saying? You gonna have the times where you in the studio till three, four in the morning. I don't know whoever in here got kids, you might gotta wake up at seven and take your kids to school. Come on. After school, you might wanna go to the gym and catch your little mind therapy and you might be back in the studio. And that's your program. Your kids not seeing you and stuff like that because you gotta work, like, you, it's different too when you are an entrepreneur, especially when you work at night. Your kids seeing you get dressed at night where they going to sleep. And they telling you like, where you going? You know what I mean? And you going to get it for them. So it takes a certain mindset to be able to hustle and get to that every single day, bro. I think that's like, that's the hustle, bro. You know what I mean? Separation. Come on, Greg Smith. Yeah, man, nobody's coming to save you, first and foremost. Come on, come on. So in that regard, I think for me, in my example, I learned hustle early, and I learned it from my mom. My mom got up every day at 5.30 in the morning. So for me, at a certain age, it felt like I could get up in the morning too. So every morning, when she got up, I got up. I went to high school, hopped the gate, and did my due diligence. Did I know what I was doing then? No, but I was thinking about certain things. Like for me, this game of basketball is global, right? I done seen Michael Jordan then play, right? internationally there's gonna be kids overseas trying to compete and get into the league what i gotta do to differentiate myself what i gotta do to be more prepared to put myself in that position so when it happens right and then i can't be discouraged because things happen all the time right i mean park cars get hit too right yes sir so in that regard i gotta keep staying locked in because no matter what if i'm on my objective i can reach my goal come on now he said park car When I think of hustle, I think of consistency mm -hmm. of your life. Mm -hmm. So, for you know, me and Keys, our motivation when we create music, we watch Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant highlights every single day because they represent hard work and hustle. So, that keeps us going like i'd be hearing stories of kobe like everybody went to the club and he was at the gym at 5 a.m in the morning so for us that's like the motivation we have when i think of hustling mm, come on keep the mic next question is for you and keys now faith and relationships um keys left sacramento shout out to keys he left sacramento for san diego in 2008 with 800 dollars in his pocket and uh, linked up with Mike. I mean, they they had been working before that. But anyway, through the work, they link up with Dom Kennedy, and he was the first to really believe 
in them and their relate and that relationship played a huge role in what we know Mike and Keys to be today. Now what y'all don't know is this fella here has his first, what was it, the first um ma your first major placement was 50 cents. Yeah, y'all might not know that. But it go all the way back like that. Clap it up, make some noise for that. Come on. Now, I want y'all to, first of all, I want y'all to elaborate on being a team and what that faith and those relationships have done for y'all. Um, well, for me and Keys, we've been working together so long, people used to think we was brothers. Yeah. And we come from a church background. Both of our parents was pastors. So we come from structure. And when we we was always it was easy to work with and you know Keys is like more of a quiet person, I'm more of like a talkative person, so our balance is so perfect for our music career and everything we was trying to do. And so I'm more of the person that's gonna talk to everybody and build the relationships and Keys is gonna make sure the music gets done correctly and that's our balance. Mm -hmm. Come on, pass it to Keys right. and then I'm gonna let Pookie and Lou Russell get a response. Yeah, like like you said, the structure, that's what we grew up on. Cause you know, our dads were both pastors. Um, that's why I really, I, I like when the ladies talked about, you know, having faith in God. Cause that's, that's definitely where I come from. That's where he comes from. And we know who our God is, you know what I mean? So um, yeah, he just blessed us, man. Uh, Cause before it was, it was more than just me and Mike. It was other people in the group, but then you know, me and him just had that chemistry. You know, it might as well just be us. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And we were successful at that point. Come on. All Come right. on. I mean, the accolades, 11 times platinum. What? Talk to us. Tell us. Oh, Pop that shit. <laughs> Pop it. Pop it. Pop it. Pop it. Pop it. Uh, man. Do it. <laughs> I mean, I would, have to, I, I would have to give it up for Nip first. Right. Come on. You know, That's right. a piece of the late great Nip. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah, because, uh, because Victory Lap was like a 10 year thing. Right. You know, like when, when, like when we first started work, working with Nip, we started working on Victory Lap. People don't know that. Ooh. Like when we were, when we were working on Crenshaw, we was also working on Victory Lap too. Come on. So, Come on. so yeah, that right there and working with uh, BJ Chicago Kid, he got nominated for a Grammy as well for Best r and album. Maya. And it's crazy because we was all in the same studio. Mm -hmm. Us. Maya, Mars, BJ Chicago Kid, like that whole energy was epic. So I'll never forget those days. Come on, shout out to, shout out to Mark. All right, we're going to pass the Pookie the room. Hello, hello. Okay. Let's go, Pookie. Let's talk about their faith and relationships. Oh, this, this is good. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, y'all know I live on faith, man. Like they both said, the church background, I was born and raised in church. So um, faith is something that was always instilled in me. And uh, I think it's our job to read the book of Job. Come on. That went over your heads. But it's our job our to job. read the book of Job. The book of Job. Hey, hey, mama caught that. To, uh, yeah, that. to yeah. understand faith yeah. and the works of faith, you feel me? Because like, even at your most down and point, everything could be gone. Mm. You still gotta keep that faith. Mm. I've been in the predicaments. Mm. I still live in those predicaments. Mm -hmm. So faith is like the ringleader of my life. Like, so faith is, is, is just, just have a little bit of it. You hear me? Yeah. And a lot of people don't understand what faith is because they don't understand themselves. Yeah. If you don't have faith in yourself, how can you understand faith within itself? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I'm saying that's what I do every day. I just think and I sit on the toilet and... <laughs> <laughs> Come on, movie. <laughs> Hey, look, man, you follow Pookie, you know every morning he's sitting on that toilet and giving you a message. And I'm talking about faith. Come on, that's right. <laughs> you got to think about this is my analogy. I wake up. I got to release the shit before 11. <laughs> or less all day I'm going to be full of shit. <laughs> Come on. That's why a lot of you are full of shit, because you're going to release on. it in the morning. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Have faith and release that shit. <laughs> Come on, Russell, faith in relationships. Man, I had to, um, I'm, I'm indie because I started doing a lot of stuff myself and I had to really learn to let go of that need. And um, I think the most powerful thing you could do is empower someone else. But 
you have to get to a point in yourself to where you could even empower someone else because some people don't want to give it up because they jealous or they fear or got this doubt that you know their position would be um taken mm -hmm. and you know i had to really learn to just trust the people around me you know you can't throw a no look pass if you don't trust your teammates wow. Just getting around people that you can trust, but for you to even trust people, you have to really, really trust yourself. Damn. Come on, come on, everywhere. What it do, man? Come on, let's talk about your faith, man. Oh man, I ain't gonna lie, they didn't say everything. Oh, everything I wanted to say, you know what I mean? But nah, picking it back off of what bro said, like Man, you gotta have trust in your in your people and your team around you. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That was real. You know what I'm saying? I be I be saying like just in general. You know what I'm saying? If I'm shooting the ball, I can't get the rebound every time. You know what I'm saying? Come on. And vice versa. You know what I'm saying? If I gotta pass the ball, who I'm gonna pass it to? If you ain't, you gotta have faith when you're doing that in your mm -hmm. team and, and everything that you're doing. Come on. And, um, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. They said everything. It's already yeah, too awesome. much for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come on, that's right. That's right. We'll clap it up for that. He said, "Here's it." Craig Smith. Let's talk about that faith, man. Faith and relationship. I mean, I'm the last one, dog. At least you got to say something. Um, <laughs> but I, but I think for me, it just goes. It's almost like being in an airplane. I gotta put the mask on myself first Come on. before I can go help the next person. That's right. And that that's just what it comes down to. Trusting, believing in yourself. And then once you have that belief, it's almost, it's an energy transfer, right? Mm -hmm. Because then I know that person, he got my back too, you feel me? And we vibing. And it just could be an eye contact or a dap up, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that type of, that type of energy to make sure you just handle yourself and handle your things first, then everything can, can yep. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, straight like that. Come on, clap it up for that. The Russell pass the mic to the Russell. All right, so many of y'all might not know, the Russell was actually a videographer back in his day. Um, he recorded, I forgot what motorcycle club that was out there in Oakland, but you recorded the videos that day for them. And that right there, to see that was crazy because you never know where your journey takes you. All you gotta do is act on what you believe. You left your job in 2016, you know what I'm saying, lost the Mustang. You 2019. said, oh, in 2019. 2019, there you go. <laughs> Ooh, shit. You, in 20, you, yeah, whatever, anyway. Uh, you said, I lost everything but hope. You know, you've lost 1,500 at the door, only five people showed up to the show. Some, you were, some. Oh, okay. See, when you a boss's ass, go. <laughs> Uh, was, uh, was even, and you talked about at the show that you did here, how you were even unsure about the ticketing platform uh, that you created. You know, you talk about times that you could have stopped. Um, making it through all of that, the 1500 at the go, shout out to Ty, wherever she is, if she's still here. She, I did, I did my first live talk show. Only one person pulled up. Shout out to Bankhead, shout out to Trump Radio. Only one person pulled up, and it crushed my heart. But a nigga kept going. We're here today. You feel what I'm saying? Um, Um, man, so so talk about that, bro. Dealing with the losses, but losing everything but hope. Talk about that, man. <laughs> hey, you know the the beautiful thing about life is like um, it's seven days in a week, and it's four weeks in a month, and it's twelve months in a year. And it's a lot of years in a lifetime. And um, I'm just always kind of grounded in the idea that like, if it happened today, it doesn't mean it'll happen tomorrow. Ah. And you know, if you keep just going on that, sometimes life be life in on Monday. Ooh. But by Friday come, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's just like remembering to keep going. Like, you know, it's gonna be plenty of times like, when you start off, you in a bucket. And when you in a bucket, you already know. This shit might cut off halfway to work. You feel me? And it's like, sometimes, sometimes you gotta leave your bucket there, just let them niggas come tow it and figure it out after you get off work what you gonna do. And sometimes somebody will pull up with some gas and be like, man, I got you. And you could get to the gas station and put your little five in and keep going, but 
And you just have to remember to keep going. Come on, clap it up, make some noise for that. Clap it up, make some noise for that. Like, oh, it's me again. <laughs> now, can you repeat the yeah. question? Um, so I want to talk. I want to talk about losing everything but hope. Losing everything but hope. Man. What does that look like? Man? What has that looked like for you? <sighs> so there was a time when I did want to quit. Uh, Mike knows this, but the hope was. You know, having a partner like her. Mm -hmm. Come on, and, uh, come on. I want I want to mention our big OG Reese from San Diego. You know, he was like, "I'm not gonna let you quit, bro," because this music industry will have you go crazy. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I don't like the industry. I, you know, he he knows that. But I love the music. That's why I'm still here. And you know, I I just had hope because he had hope, and everybody around me had hope. So it was just a team, a team that you, you gotta have a team around you in order to, where, where's your hope gonna come from if you don't have people around you to support you? Come on. Exactly, so so that's exactly what that means to me, mm -hmm. just having a team and support and family. Mm -hmm. That's right, come on, Webby Webb. Yeah. 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 That's real, bro, for real, for real. This music industry, it, it'll eat you alive if you let it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, on based off the question, like my experience and stuff, man, I didn't, I didn't want to quit a bunch of times. Like I started off telling y'all I was a producer first, and I still do make beats and stuff. I still produce for my, myself and my friends. But um, you know, I went through a lot with that producing where it got to the point where I didn't even want to make music no more. You know what I'm saying? We, we always was doing stuff where you know the bills was paid and everything was good. So I kind of got to a point one time where I was like, man, I'm cool off the music. You know what I'm saying? And, um, Man, bro, picking back off of bro with that faith in God, you, you gotta keep your faith. With hey, that's first, you feel me? Somehow, somewhere, I ain't gonna really tell the story, but I got thrown into the rap game, and it, it's been the biggest blessing of my life. You feel me? Going from producing to rapping, and it's a cold transition, but I love it, everything about it. And I think if I had lost my faith and the love for what I do and with God, it would have been bad. So you got to keep that, even when your strength is very small, you know what I'm saying? You about to lose everything, you got to keep going. Come on, that's right. Straight like that. Y'all clap it up for that. Come on, friends, get up. Losing everything with hope. Well, there's one thing I want to say about, like, just the music industry and, and the, the athlete entertainment industry. It's all in the same cahoots yeah. as far as that energy. Yeah. You feel me? Because there's, right? There's those those people who want to take advantage, right? People who got um, certain certain uh, things that they may try to do to take advantage of you, like straight up. What's the word I'm looking for? I'm actually looking for a word for this. Oh shit! No. Agendas. Agendas. Oh, he was on point. Yeah, people got <laughs> agendas. Come on, Josh. Hey, I appreciate that. <laughs> people got agendas, and sometimes. It's, it's difficult. That shit will make you want to quit. It will make you like think like differently about your industry because now you get to see the negative effects. But then in that in that space and time, the beautifulness about us and what we do is we creators. We make beautiful art. So out of those examples, we'll turn around and flip it. Because for me, an example would be a motherfucker come up like, man, you trash. You can't play, mm. right? Am I gonna quit on that shit? No. I'm gonna be like, man, fuck you. I'm about to bust your ass, pause. I'm about to give you a 40 piece. Like, straight up. You feel what I'm saying? Like, you talking shit? Like, we about, I'm gonna talk this shit back. Yeah. So, I think it's just just that type of this, uh, mind process. You feel what I'm saying? Because it gets crazy out here uh, in that manner. And you gotta make sure you gotta know how to navigate like those lanes because those vultures is out there. Come on. And they try to take advantage of you every step in the situation. And for you, you gotta make sure that you gotta stay in tune with yourself. And I think I heard it uh, earlier, you gotta surrender. Yeah. Because there's certain things that you're not gonna be able to battle out here by, by yourself. You gotta get that up to God. And I think once you give it up in certain situations, because I had crazy situations happen where either faulty agents, right, or just women in woodworks in different situations trying to take advantage of you. But in that regard, you you find faith and you find purpose and you get stronger. And that's just one thing I think everybody should learn from, especially like a failure is a teaching lesson. It's gonna make you better. It ain't gonna make you worse. Unless you, unless you make it on yourself. Yeah, you let it. Yeah, you let it.
Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Clap it up for that. That was a bar. Let's start with the mic. We're losing everything but hope. I mean, I'm going to keep it real. There's two words I don't like. Can't and hope. Mm -hmm. It's um, keys to tell you, I believe. Once I believe, it's no, you can't tell me nothing else. So I don't know what the word hope is. It's, 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 be it's belief, faith, or nothing. Come on. Mm -hmm. Why do you like that? Um, I just, like I said, we watch Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan videos every day. So it's, it's a belief of like, it's gonna happen no matter what. Mm -hmm. okay. That's right. Yeah, that's just that's right. That's the mind frame. Come on, clap it up for that. Clap it up for that. What you gonna do, man? Come on. That smell. He coming with something. Right. <laughs> I, I, um, I lose. I lose things every day. But that's what makes you keep going. Um, the fact that if you will lose hope, I mean, you never believed in what you were set out to do in the first place. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So. At the end of the day, it's it's nothing to be lost. It's just everything to gain. You just got to be able to understand that. Mm. It's a lot of things. Things can be taken away for that reason, so you can gain even better mm. and more. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And until people realize that, a lot of people won't let things go. So they won't take the fact of losing things as something good. They really sit and kill themselves off because they didn't want to lose that in life not knowing they should have. Come on. So you have to be able to accept losing things as part of your growth process. Yes. Come on. Yeah, I, I love mean. that. Clap it up. Thank you for that. Pass the grand I just asked Mike and Keys a question. Go ahead. What was the favorite Michael Jordan video? Oh, oh that's a bar. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's gonna be come fly with me. Okay, yeah, come that's fly. what I agree with. <laughs> Come on, the real recognized real. Uh, Craig Smith, I heard you talk about making decisions. You had to make certain decisions to make sure you stayed on the right path when you've seen other people going the wrong way. Uh, so let's talk about decision making and why that's so important in this life and who you can become. Oh man, that's a very important question because I like to say I was born in war, mm. but I think all of us were born in war. Mm. You feel me? Like my brother was shot in the head when I was young. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? So I had to deal with a lot of different adversity as a kid. And one thing that I felt like was therapeutic to me was the game of basketball. You know what I'm saying? Cause my mom played it. Like my dad ain't play it. My cousins ain't play it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it gave me an opportunity to really like push that negative energy that I had, that anger, you feel what I'm saying? Like why that had to happen? And uh, like, it just turned into something else because I felt like when we go through certain traumas, what we do as a community, we can come out and we make beautiful art because of it. Yes. And because of that art, I got to you know, play at a high division one. I got to be in which tomorrow I'll be entering the Fairfax Hall of Fame. And that's, I mean, to be honest, it's not pretty, it's a basketball school, but it's not because we got so many musicians, so many entertainers, right? From Demi Moore, I mean, Mila Kunis was in my class. You feel me? From the Red Hot Chili Peppers and them. So to be one of those basketball players, it truly feels like like something really great. You feel me? And not only that, like I get to pour that into my son. I get to let him know what he's capable of in this world and what he can conquer. Right? So grab it up for that. Come on. Okay. So decisions. You know, how important is it to make the certain decisions? Even maybe, maybe everybody else not agreeing with you, but you still stand on the decision that you're making out here. Man, you gotta be firm, you know what I'm saying? For whatever you're doing, Come on. that's your mindset. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe it, who else gonna believe it, you feel me? Yeah. Whether it's right or wrong, if you believe it, that's what you gotta push with. It ain't no like middle ground, half stepping, playing both sides of the fence. How you gonna? Man, I ain't gonna lie, when, I don't even know where my nigga went, but his daddy told me something real. He said, you can't put halfway or nothing into something, you ain't gonna get 100% out. You get put 50 into something, mathematically, you can't even get 100% out, you feel me? Come on. So whatever you're doing, you gotta be firm on that. If it's a decision and you like, no, it's not what we're doing, then that's what it is. And if the people around you don't understand, sometimes either you gotta just let them go, or you just gotta show them what it is, you know what I'm saying? Come on. And that's just, that's how it go, bro. Come on, yeah, clap it up for that. Let's talk about that, man. Yeah, so 
when you asked that question, I thought about my dad, rest in peace. Um, so, living in a Christian household, you know, they don't let you listen to rap, or none of that. So it's ironic that I do this for a living, you know, so um, the fact that he supported my decision, he knew that I was doing it for the right reason, like to, to really feed my family and to really, you know, support my family as a man. And I really thank him for that, for supporting me. Like he was hard on me all the time as a kid, but he always supported what I did. Any decision I made, he, he always supported that. And so did my mom and my, and my whole family. So, and it's also crazy, my sisters do music as well. So they supported me. And uh, I'm, I, I just thank God for him. Yeah. For real, for real. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Clap it up for that. Come on. Decision. Decision. And I think decision making is really like your power and the skill that you get to home. Like when you realize that your life where you are today is a product of every decision you made or didn't make, you realize the power in that. And even when you go into the workforce or a career, the highest position in every job is a nigga who don't do a lot of action, but they decide everything that goes on within the company. Lucian Grange is the CEO of Universal, and he don't make songs, he don't make music, but he decide everything that happens in music. So it's just like, it's the ultimate power to be able to make the right decisions. And throughout life, you do, you make so many every day, you really gotta trust yourself and remember that you are where you are because of the decisions you made. Come on, you are your decisions. That's right, come on, please. Repeat the question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, talk about making those decisions. Even if nobody's agreeing with you, you standing on what you're standing uh, on your decision. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, me personally, I stand on everything I say. It's no second guessing it. It is what it is. If, if I feel that way, I feel that way. If I say it, I said it. I'm standing on it, so. My decision about anything I make is really thought out, but it's honestly felt. I feel my decisions. You feel what I'm saying? The fact that I don't like you, I don't make a decision off of that. I could not like you, but I could feel your vibe. That's how I make my decision. You get what I'm saying? So that's why I stand very firm. Like Webb said, you gotta stand on what you say. Stand on what you believe, stand on what you do. Because your one decision can lead a flock of people or it can devastate a whole town of people. You know what I'm saying? So, that's, just, that's my thought. That's my analogy. Man. That's that still on that. Yeah, that's right. Clap it up for that. Clap it up for that. That's all about it, right? Um, I think decisions are very important. I think it's, that's the, uh, you were talking about being a boss. A boss has to make a lot of decisions. That's right. A father, a mother has to make decisions, teachers, everybody. And so I think that's very important. And I think making decisions is a, a energy thing and you gotta you gotta stick with what you how you feel about whatever decision you make. So I feel like if you gotta be firm with making great decisions, pretty much. That's right, clap it up, make some noise back. What is, you can pass it to Greg Smith, what is that one thing um, that you had to overcome in order to do what you gotta do? You know, like for me, of course, I shared earlier, insecurities, not believing. What's that one thing that you had to overcome in order to get you to where you are today? Man, that's a really good question. Cause I feel like for me, it was just always having to believe. And I felt like for me, I would just manifest things. I'm going to the NBA. Or if I'm in the backyard with a broken hoop, I feel like I'm in an arena, and I feel like I'm with, I'm playing against Magic Johnson, right? I'm putting that energy out there constantly. So I felt like what then happened was, I guess when I got older, I always started hearing, man, you ain't gonna go to the league, right? Or man, you trash, or you can't do this, right? Just this, the simple negativities of life coming at you, right? Just normal, right? I think for me, it just, it just continued to boost the fire for me. And I think for me, the, the difference was every negative I got in my life, I felt like I turned it into a positive. 
Because I felt like I had no choice. Yeah. And I mean, right. coming from the, the inner community, you always got to figure it out. Mm -hmm. So it ain't about just putting your head down. It's keeping your head up, mm -hmm. understanding where you come from and what you're about and doing your due diligence. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I always felt in my energy I was a king. You feel me? Because we didn't have Google yet and I couldn't research certain things, right? Yeah. So, but now, here we are. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And I mean, at the end of the day, it's just... It's just all about good energy. Mm. Come on, that's right, clap it up there. Well, well uh, talk to us about what did it look like when this shit started? When you said, you know what, I'm going for it. I don't, I don't care what, how it feel, how it's gonna feel. What did it look like when you made that decision? For example, for me, I was working my nine to five. I was on the phone with my mom, and I'm like, mom, I just feel like God is calling me to do this, but I don't know how to do it. She just said, baby, you gotta do it, you gotta listen to God, and you gotta go for it. So what did that look like for you? Talk about that moment. Um, it was really tough, you know what I'm saying? It was the first one was when I was like full-time producing before I started the rapping part. Um, man, I, I remember I, I was working at Bloomingdale's in Orange County, right Ooh, there in South Coast Plaza. Yeah. I don't even know how I got the job. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but we got it, you know what I'm saying? We was in there thugging, I had a suit on and shit, you know what I'm saying? Real player and all that. I was soaking up game the whole time though, but um, I remember one day I was talking to the homie. He telling me like, hey bro, you, you getting places and stuff. You tight at making beats. Like, why are you working at Bloomingdale's? Like, fuck me and why I'm working at Bloomingdale's. I got a good ass job. I'm over here with white folks, chilling. Yeah. I got 40% off with y'all. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting paid. Ten percent. They come to my Gucci shoes all day. Come on, you know what I'm saying? He like, yeah, but he like, you well. He like, yo, let us know they ain't booming deals. He like, you building somebody else dream. Come on. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, bro. That shit hit me so hard like a semi truck. I quit the next day. <laughs> come on, come on. Yeah, bro, I quit. I, I was like, this is what we do. You know what I'm saying? We're going to have to go through the fire. Yeah. Things might be broke. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. But this my dream. And this is what I want to do. And like we was talking earlier, like you got to be firm on what you want to do. And you got to have hope, faith, and all the other stuff. And believe in yourself. And I felt that. You know what I'm saying? And then later on with the rapping, it was kind of like the same thing. I felt like a God giving it then, like handed it to me. So I never had any intentions on rapping. You know what I'm saying? And, um, what it happened here is like, you know, this this one guy asked me and told me to do, and we gonna dug it out, and this was gonna happen. You know, you know that that journey right there has been difficult, bro. Like it's been a lot of ups and downs, just with a lot of different things, but we pushing. You feel me? Yeah. This what I believe in. I'm staying firm on myself. I got two kids, bro. My guys name gonna mean something. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. love. Yeah. 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 I was at work one day driving this truck and I told myself this ain't my uniform. I want to create my own uniform. Y'all see, I wear this shit everywhere I go. But, but you gotta understand, it took me a long time to believe that I could do that. Shit, man. I, I mean, I've been here clapping up all my life. God bless me to turn this into something. Like for real. God bless me to turn this into something. Whatever is yours is yours, but you gotta put in the work to go out and get it. Yeah. You know, Keys, what did that look like? The day you said, fuck it, I'm in it. When I got released from working at Costco. Oh, come on, Costco! I, I had a similar situation. Yeah. So I was at Costco for like three months and they let me go because they changed my schedule and it was all tricky. But when that happened, that's when I ended up with the 50 cent placement. Wow. So what, whatever check I was getting, it was triple. Right. That, that song was triple. So, I mean, it was a blessing in disguise. I remember Mike saying, this is a blessing in, in disguise. I'll never forget that. Come on, God working, baby. What did that look like, LaRussell? Man, it's a culmination of moments. You know, it's, fuck it, I'm going, and it's, Fuck it, I'm going back to work. <laughs> Fuck it, maybe I could do, you know, it's, it's a culmination of moments. And um, for me, I just like, I had rather, I 
I want it to be like fulfilled more than I desired the security that my job was giving me. You know, like I was making money, but I wasn't fulfilled. And I was going to work miserable and coming home miserable from it. So for me, it was just like, it was a choice to, to not choose misery. That's a bar. I, I'm really, and it's crazy, you clap it up for that. I relate to that. You know, we, we go to work, we making this money, but you're not fulfilled. And I'm working these jobs, and I'm like, I just don't, I, at one point, I'm not gonna lie to you, true, real shit. I drove a truck. I was like, you know what? It, it got so bad for me. I said, you know what? I just wanna jump in the truck and crash so that they can fire me. <laughs> that's how bad it was. No, that's real shit, though. I, I, was, I was sick of it. I felt like I, I told, I, I told my wife, I probably told my mom, I feel like I'm stuck in a box. I feel like this isn't me. I don't belong here. And so with that, faith, taking the steps, making the decisions, we here today. Let's go, Pookie. Um, it felt like I wanted to live. The moment I said, I'm gonna do what I want to do. And that came very early though. Um, I've always used to have jobs. Target, Old Navy, Jiffy Lube, Damn, Jiffy Lube. Oh, make Donald's. Um, I even worked at Man's Warehouse. I sold Bear in the Soup. <laughs> Before that, that's where I, I seen like, oh, because I start putting things together. That's when I realized I was really a people person. Then I'm at the Man's Warehouse in Marina Del Rey, so I'm running to a lot of super people. But I'm realizing how they gravitate. I'm like, why am I selling suits? I could be selling myself. Come on, come on. Giving people a vibe, entertainment, some fun. You feel me? So um, now people wear me like the suit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I said it's when I made that decision. I wanted to live. It felt like I was living now. You know what I mean? I'm like I said again. I'm a nine to five. So the same schedule I took to go to that job and sell these suits and teach a grown man how to tie a Windsor tie and I'm 19 top salesman. I'm like, hold on. Let me put that on everything and tell the world to hold up. You feel me? Like I said, living. Yeah. Come on now, clap it up for that mic. What did you look like? What did it look like when you made the decision and said, you know what I'm going for? Well, Keys will tell you, I I was living in San Diego, he was living in Sacramento, and I told him to move to San Diego. And I'm like, I don't care what's going on, I'm like, we're about to make it. And Keys woke up that day, and he was in San Diego the next day. And that's when we started our career together. And I remember we used to come to LA with $14 in our pocket, and that was for the gas. Come on. And we would make it, and just, we would be like, all we have to do is get here. That was our mentality. Mm -hmm. We just gotta make it here. Mm -hmm. And we'll figure out everything. So mm -hmm. that's that was that was the lifestyle. Come on now, y'all clap up, make some more clap. So I'm gonna let people in the audience, we're gonna take about three questions. And it's uh, oh he there, he ready. Okay, here we go. We got my boy Fed. He said he got the first one. So we're gonna take two questions after that. And uh yeah, take the stage, bro. Over here. Uh, I'm in there. Uh, I go by the name of Vet. That's V E T, versatile with endless talents. I feel like we all were bit or supposed to be on this earth to do a lot of different things, whether we knew it or not. It sounds like everybody here has been through multiple hoops and journeys in their life. So um, obviously, you have to build credibility. And when you're doing a lot of things, it can seem kind of scattered. So, how did you go about being as uh, multi talented, multi skilled, and like super nigga as you could be? knowing that everybody was going to be looking at you like what are you focused on when you have a lot of talents within yourself that you want to maximize mm, that comes with knowing yourself first you have to um you got to fully know yourself like i'm still learning how to know myself fully you know it's a it's an endless journey so in order to conquer many things you have to understand that within yourself you're able to conquer many things you feel me because the, the many things you do are in hard, it's hard to other people because they don't understand themselves. But like me, when I wake up, I cook, I clean, I promote, and I go turn up a show later on the night, all in the same day. But that's like how you will wake up and 
you'll probably go to the gym and you'll go do this and that. You know what I mean? It's all on how you understand and really know yourself. You get I me? Mean? I don't like to wake up and think about what am I about to do? I like to wake up and just go. While you sitting there waking up thinking about what you gonna do, you done smoked your blunt, it's 11 o'clock. I done closed three plays. Cause I just got up and went. Cause I understand my ability. All I need is my presence in your face and everything is happening. You get me? So it's not about being a super nigga, it's about being super active with yourself. <laughs> Anybody else got something to say to respond to that? No? Nope. Right. He did it? Damn. I guess that was that. All right, now we're going to take the next question. Who wants to? Um, young lady right there. Braves. They locked. Oh, excuse me. The locks. The locks. I don't disrespect the locks. Sorry. Hello, oh, my I'm Divine. I'm a music artist. And I know some of you guys mentioned that you were fathers. As a female entering the music industry, what advice would you give your daughters or your sisters? Ooh. Damn, pass it straight to me, huh? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I got a daughter, right? My daughter is seven years old. She, that's my best friend. Um, she tell me, I brought her up on stage with me one day at a show. Ever since then, she uh, she be telling me she want to be a superstar. You know what I'm saying? So um, I think with, with, with women, and I was just talking to the homie about this the other day. Y'all are so powerful. Like, sometimes I don't even think y'all realize how powerful y'all is. Like, y'all can run the world, you know what I'm saying? So, for me, I tell my daughter, like, she can do anything. Don't let nothing stop her. You know what I'm saying? She going to... It's kind of crazy because I talk to my daughter like she's older than seven. But she talked to me like I'm older than my age, so it kind of worked out. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you know, I tell my daughter, like, she going to see things and... She don't really understand why I parent her the way I parent her now, but like my mom used to tell me, like in 10 years, you don't understand why you're gonna get this. So I think it's just really important to just like make sure you there with them. Cause being a parent ain't just showing up. Y'all women do a great job of being a parent, but I'm gonna speak for me at least. It ain't just about showing up and taking place and doing stuff. You gotta really be a parent. You know, that kid gonna grow up and be a product of you. So I think when you really install everything that you, you know, within yourself, and our, and our little kid and our, and our girl, she's gonna be whatever you want her to be and whatever she wanna be too. So just keep her motivated, keep her focused and, and make sure she got a support system. Mm -hmm. Cause y'all need that, you know what I'm saying? Y'all got emotions mm -hmm. and they very vibrant, mm -hmm. especially with little girls. So they need to know you got their back. Yeah. 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 Wow, wow. Everybody, everybody else? Mike, Mike, Mike. I got two daughters. Uh, my oldest daughter, she acts, does photos, a lot of things, and early when I started doing music, I always had my daughters with me in the studio, and I want them to see everything that's going on. I want them to know what their dad is doing, and so we have a great relationship. It's funny, they don't even like being in the studio. They're like, this is boring. So, but I want them to know everything that's going on. I want them to see early, and I think it's, I'm building a relationship with my daughters being able to show them with their dad. You know, a lot of times dads are at work and they don't, they're gone. But I want, I, sometimes I like them being there so they can be a part of the energy. That's right. That's right. Uh, I don't have daughters, I have sons, but I'm pretty sure they, they are kids. So it don't really matter the gender. Um, but my boys, I don't hide anything from them at all. I keep it very 100 with my sons, but appropriate 100, get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like with your daughter, this is what I see with my sister do, but I took advice from my sister, that's why I apply it with my boys. I make sure they understand they can come to me for anything. And you set her mind aside from what's shown to her. Every time I talk to my boys, I say the same thing. We don't greet each other, hey dad, hey no, who's the greatest? They both say their name. Who's the smartest? They both say their names. Who's the fastest? You feel me? Then the last thing I ask them, how you treat people? And they both say respect. But I've been instilling that since they came out the womb. So it's like it's a natural thing right now. And then it's like I let my son see what it is I do. 
When I struggle, I don't hide it. When I'm hustling, I don't hide it. When I'm angry, I can't hide it. They feel it. You get what I'm saying? You have to be very transparent because they're going to see that. Then they're going to sit there. They want to mock it. All our kids want to be like this. It's just when you start showing the negativity of sides. But then you go elsewhere to search for the positive. That's why they join gangs and shit like that that don't really show you your identity. They show you other people that's thinking like you. And that's what everybody follows. So you gotta instill that. Keep their mind set on what the purpose is. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. We got time for one more question. Yeah. There we go. Let's go. Speak up, JB. Hi, my name is Bernisa, host of Speak Up JB podcast. Come on. So I know y'all being on the grind, going through it, and things actually turning out for the better. Have you guys ever dealt with imposter syndrome or feeling unworthy? If so, how did y'all deal with it and pivot through it? Come on, who got that? What? Unworthy? Give me that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, there's a lot of imposters out here, and I can speak firsthand on that, okay? But at the end of the day, it's not about what they're doing, it's what you continue to do. Mm-hmm. That's what people fall short to think about. And I was even a person who fell short about that. So I've done a lot of shit. I can pop my shit. Very boldly. You know what I mean? And the reciprocation is not the same. But that's not for me to get angry about. His actions is not supposed to be my actions. My mind frame is not supposed to be his mind frame. His doings is not supposed to be yours. So what I'm basically saying is whatever it is I did, it's just because that's who I am. You have to understand who you are before you do what you do. Because every action comes with something at the back end of that. You know what I'm saying? Whether you're ready to accept it or not. You set that energy by doing it. So be able to accept what comes with it. So me, I can't be down. I have to accept it. I can't show you guys that I'm fucked up. I have to accept it because I'm a lot of people's inspiration, motivation, smiles. That shit I take is a lot of people's message they wait for every morning. That's dead ass serious. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, shit, you're gonna see a lot of imposters, but you shake them off, and you still treat them with the same kindness. You know what I'm saying? Because your bigger blessing is within what you did. Not what they not doing. Come on, man. Come on. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. One more question. I'm gonna give you one more. One more. Go ahead. You, you sparked it. I saw you start the engine and turn it right off. And ask that question. Come on. Yeah. You, come on. You thought about it. It's not. Well, it's a question. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank you guys because you gave us so much food for the soul and I appreciate you, you men of color and the work that you're doing in the community. And all I was going to ask is can I can I join you in doing work in the community? <laughs> and whatever you guys got going on, I'm an artist, you know, and I'm also just, like I said, I'm, I'm in the business of trying to save lives and I want to join other powerful, inspiring men to help save lives because I deal with youth every day and I'm also, you know, um, I produce my, my own shows to 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 bring community together and, and for that purpose of being together in the space to heal. So my question was just, can I join y'all at some point in healing the community? Come on, that's <laughs> the community. <laughs> Man, this was this was beautiful. Uh, this is gonna wrap up this panel. This is gonna wrap up this panel. We will be back in February. In between that time, I gotta get funding. All this is coming on my pocket. God has blessed me to do it, but I gotta do it, and I gotta do it right. I gotta get this funding. We gotta get these sponsors. We gotta get this shit because. This is something that we all need, you know what I mean? Like, it might not be for everybody, but it's for somebody. Mm-hmm. And somebody was able to pick up some game tonight. Somebody is gonna leave here inspired. Somebody made a new connection. Somebody left is leaving with drive and blessing, and God touched somebody tonight. And that's what it's all about. When I first did this, when I realized the, the, the feedback on this, when I realized the reaction to this, I said, well, this is something that we need. So 
Y'all stay tuned for Clap It Up LA. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep getting bigger and better and bringing, you know what I'm saying, bringing these big names up in here. But it's all about what these people go through. Because just like you, we can all relate to a struggle. How many of us can relate to only having five dollars and being able to put that in the tank? Come on, how many of us can relate to shit, man? Hey, man, look, we didn't have bread and barbecue sauce in the house, and that's all we can eat. You know what I mean? That's what it's. That's 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 what it's. That, that's what we're here for, man. Shout out to Chuck because Chuck really, he really, really made it on the last panel. And he's just talking about his partner and how he had to set, you know, the, the partner went to separate ways. And, and, you know, life is going to life wherever you at, whoever you are. Barack Obama's going through it. You're going through it. Life is going to life. But you got to stand tall through it all in ball. Do you feel what I'm saying? Come on now. Now that went over your head. Come on. Stand tall through it all in ball. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's get that going. We're going to do that right here. Pop it up, video. All right. You don't play one song and you want to go? One song and then play. And then another thing, Pookie effing Rude is about to turn us up. Yeah. So after this, let's get ready. Let's go. So, I mean, the Pop it up video in the picture, and then we go. And then Pookie effing Rude going to do his thing. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> No, I'm playing. All of them that I sent you. All of them. All right, come on, Pictures, uh, drop it up video. Huh? Oh, yeah, you can do it. All right, all right. Let's take this Let's take this picture. We know. This is my shit. Yo, I call it the framing. These niggas ain't talking my language. This cool get to it when it's swaying. All right, stay down here like a new chain. Thank you.